Before the final versions of Pokemon Gold and Silver were developed, a version of the game existed that was basically an entirely different game. This version of the game was shown off in 1997 at the Nintendo Shoshinkai event. This version of Pokemon Gold and Silver were so different that it not only had a very different Pokedex, but it also had an entirely different world map. Instead of just being based on two regions of Japan like in the final game, this original map covered the whole of Japan. Thanks to Elite, we have access to the complete maps of that version, both exterior and interior, and even NPCs laid out telling us what may have even been the early story. So today on Cut Content, we look at the 1997 beta maps of Pokemon Gold and Silver. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell too to further support us and keep creating new videos. Now as stated, this version of Pokemon Gold and Silver was based on the entire map of Japan. So the first map we will look at is the iconic town map. In this case, this is the literal map of Japan here. These two regions here being Kanto and Johto that we know from the final game and we'll plan to look at more closely as to how different they are in this version. Note that we will be using what is known as the debug version of the 1997 build. This version will let us walk through walls and warp to areas that this demo wouldn't allow us to get to otherwise. Also note that many of the NPCs are already in place but can't be interacted with but their placement may give us just an idea of what the story might have been in this game. And so for our first stop we'll enter Silent Hill. No I'm serious that's what it's actually called. Not intentionally as it's actually based on the Shizuoka region of Japan which the name can be translated as Silent. Being a smaller region in real life the game reflects that very much by encasing four houses here. Not too different from the final game starting town of New Bark Town, which the town obviously evolved into. It has an obvious opening going north that strangely enough ends in a dead end, but more on that later. The game as normal starts out in the player's room which has two beds instead. The second bed actually belonging to an older brother you have in the game. The town also has a Pokemon Center something absent from the final game. Now to get it out of the way, the Pokemon centers in this build are wider with the PC area even having its own alcove. Upstairs all the major articles are here too including trading, battling and even the time capsule, showing how early they wish for you to transfer your old Pokemon. But the big aspect of this town is the laboratory. This one being quite a bit bigger actually as it actually has a back room which cases the Pokemon themselves. However, the interesting part is that Professor Elm wasn't here yet, but rather Professor Oak was. It can be theorized that Oak simply decided to move from Kanto to Silent Hill here. As well, it seems Silver is here too in Oak's lab and may have played a more traditional rival back then rather than being the thief son of Giovanni. Going left is the first route of the game. The odd part is the dead end here that looks like you can't go further, but if you go in anyways, you can reach another area that is very much like the rest of the route and exiting it takes you to near the end of the route. Presumably the idea back then was that you could climb hills like these and walk above them. The route ends with this early looking gate taking you into Old City. Old City is based on the real life city of Kyoto with all its old towers from medieval Japan. Kyoto in the final game is actually Ecritique City, but here this is much more likely to have evolved into Violet Town as it was the first major city of the final game and also had these Japanese towers. However, if one hasn't noticed yet, being in Kyoto means that you are in the Kansai region, which is what Johto is based off of. The Johto of this game however only covers a few cities in the whole of Japan and this being one of them. Otherwise, being based on a beta Violet Town, it has a similar site including an early Sprout Tower without its distinct wobbly middle and the gym oddly enough doesn't even look like a gym but more like an old Japanese mansion here. The gym leader can't be interacted with but if one looks in the data, a list of gym leaders exists and if it is done based on the order of the appearance, Faulkner is still the first gym leader here. Two other major points here are that Kurt who made you Pokeballs is also in this town and also a small museum that appears to have this egg looking piece on a table. 
Now passing a very small route that has a house with some N64 consoles with an unknown purpose, we enter into West City. This is based off the mega city of Osaka in Japan with its waterways and being a port city overall, which this reflects very well. Containing the second gym that actually looks like a proper gym here, featuring what may be Bugsy. Though if so, that kid actually was the gym leader of a major city back then before being relegated to Azalea Town. But aside from that, two other major points include a big department store and a communication building that has these nifty satellites here. It's pretty clear that this city became Goldenrod City in the final game, which was also directly based off of Osaka. While the department store is just another large department store, the communication building, however, appears to be flooded with Team Rocket members, showcasing that a takeover from the final game was to take place here too, except Giovanni himself is present here too. Despite him shutting it down in Gen 1, he sure did quickly change his mind and try to revive Team Rocket again. I mean, I guess that idea was revived later on in the remakes where Giovanni tries to go back to them in that one event. In fact, it seems Team Rocket also took over the whole city and are specifically blocking this one house here. Forcing my way in, it looks like a normal house. Maybe it was the mayor's residence or something? Now, there are two exits here. One leading up and one going further left. Trying to go left leads us to this dead end. It seems likely that we were supposed to talk to the sailor here to possibly warp us, but that function wasn't programmed in yet. So we'll head to the other side by using the long path of heading north instead, taking us through a rather simple route full of dead looking trees. And here I thought Japan was supposed to be this all lush place, but here instead we have a dystopian Japan. But alas, here we are in the town of Burdon. Burdon is based on the city of Totori, which is known to be the one area of Japan with sand dunes. While I guess this was supposed to be a desert city of sorts, however the Slowpoke Well is here from the final game, meaning this town might have evolved into Azalea Town for the final game. The Slowpoke Well in this case is rather small, only two rooms and the one in the back seems to be a small puzzle from the looks of it. It has a gym but this time featuring the word League on it, as opposed to the last two. Going inside however, it is a Pokemon school. Odd, but there is a set of stairs which if used takes you to the actual gym that features pitfalls as its gimmick. Hard to say why a school is here too. I mean the gym from outside appears to have two floors, so I guess in some gyms they also incorporated a school too. The gym leader, while it's hard to tell who it is from his overall design, is likely Morty by the process of elimination of the early male gym leaders, back then being called Inoki actually, in which case we actually have some old art of Morty where he also is called Inoki here too. Otherwise, the only other building of value here is this odd empty building that looks to serve as a storefront to something unique being sold, but hard to say what. But we have two paths we can choose from now. For now we will go up to try and finish the rest of the left path, thus taking us through water and a tree puzzle route to the town of Font. Font is based off the real life Izumo that has plenty of tombs and the name means fountain or sprig both of which check out here, with the fountains and the ruins of Elf being here too. The fountains can be climbed into actually, and give some resistance when climbing. The ruins of Elf themselves are rather simplistic, as it's clearly not finished, other than the main room with some familiar designs, it's just a lot of square rooms for the moment. Also while here, the Pokemarts of this version of the game are quite a bit bigger, and go pretty far to the right actually. Somewhat like a real convenience store. In the west that is. Now the last oddity of this town is this little house which contains none other than Team Rocket and what is a rather crack house looking place. Wouldn't surprise me if there was supposed to be a plot between them and the ruins of Alf here. Now from here you can go three ways. If one heads south, they get to the city of high tech, which we'll visit later. But going left leads you to an odd dead end and going up instead leads you to a closed in fence, both ways being unfinished. I imagine the north would have a ferry of sorts to take you to the next town though. So using the walk through the wall modes, it is nothing but water for a while that leads you to south city. And in case you were wondering, 
That left path there would have also led you here if not for that blockage. Now this city here is based on the real life Kyushu region of southern Japan, which the Hoenn region of Generation 3 was entirely based on. This would explain all that water we just had to go through to just get here. But with Generation 2's Hoenn being super condensed here, it still contains traditional tropical trees and mountains that we are familiar with. There isn't too much to the map except for just one mountain cave. Now unfortunately, it doesn't load when trying to enter, however there is a map that is found within the data of this ROM of a 7th floor cave featuring minecarts. Now coal mining in Japan is mainly conducted within the Hokkaido and Kyushu region, which with this place being based on Kyushu, it's possible that this map belonged here, especially with it being 7 floors which a mountain could easily fit. But the cave itself is a very complicated one, if not one of the most complicated ones in the series as it appears to feature puzzles utilizing minecarts to navigate through playing through a hacked ROM that put this all together, I got lost in here for quite some time let's just say. Now moving down, we pass through another route that is a mixture of hills, water and simple grass to the city of High Tech. High Tech being based off of Kochi, which is on the island of Shikoku, which actually translates to High Tech. In this case, it is a decently sized island city here that may have become one of the coastal towns of Olivine City or Seanwood City. It appears to have both a gym and an aquarium, the aquarium being a neat feature alongside the museum we have in this game already. The next time we got one of these wasn't until Generation 3, even featuring what I think is a squirtle pressed up against a glass here actually. Though I really think they should have tinted this place more blue than red I say. The gym itself once again being one of those school gyms with a female gym leader at the end. Could potentially be either Whitney or Jasmine, with Whitney being more my guess as her name is earlier than hers in the gym leader entries. Now the one really strange house here is this one, featuring Imposter Professor Oak. Yes, that Imposter Professor Oak from the card game. Looking a lot like Oak, but his hair is more pointed up like the one from the card game. Shows that the card game may have been tipped off on this character when they were making it. However, what he is doing in this girl's house is hard to say, but I imagine he had some villainous role going on in this game, and may have even been invited in by her, thinking he is the hotshot professor. Now as mentioned earlier, this is the path that you would take from Font to get to high tech over here. But we also have this path here at the bottom of the town, which hits the same brick bridge that we saw in West City. Much like that, we can't cross it and likely need an NPC to teleport us there. As such, the left side of the map is now complete, and we can make our way back to Burdon to explore the right side of the map, which in a normal case, we'd be able to swing right through West City to get back to Burdon. The right path being a very lengthy route, with even more dead trees across it. But it does to an extent make sense as we are going through northern Japan now, where it is very cold and so trees being dead makes sense. And so once past this, through a gate and the Pokemon Center, we are in the town of New Type. New Type is based off of Niigata City, which the name translates to New Type, and is a city known for bridges and being a town in the middle of the lake too. May have become Mahogany Town later on with it being by a lake too. Now being in northern Japan, we are more or less entering the Sinnoh Lake locations and new type by appearance alone is very similar to Canalave City of the Generation 4 games including the bridges and the waterway to the north. Of course entering the town has Silver just camping out in order to ambush you to a Pokemon battle no less like his predecessor. The town also features a bar like place that may or may not have Silver here too. A fighting dojo much like Generation 1's is here as well. I imagine Hitmontop was the prize this time maybe? And of course the school gym that oddly enough seems to be reusing the Cerulean City gym design. Likely a placeholder. The gym leader here being a guy, based on the gym leaders in the data, it could be the cut gym leader called Okera, who has no definitive sprite yet. The odd part of this town is this little body of water that seems to drag you across. A wave effect I guess? You could effectively take it to this house or even the next route. But instead of heading right, we will head up through a long water route with our first set of whirlpools all across that seemed to push you back if entered. But finally we made it to Sugar Island. 
based off of the real Sado Island, likely functioning as the original Lake of Rage here too if new type city is to be taken as Beta Mahogany Town. The obvious feature of this town is this cave that seems to be once again not loading. But this house to the left is also very strange. Despite its shape, it's very long and has a very glitchy mess of tiles at that here. Now back to new type, we take that water wave right to a very very long route of grass, hills and even a Pokemon Center cause after how long this is, one at the halfway point is very thoughtful to recuperate. Going past what is another cave that one can't enter and into a gate, we make it to a body of water that contains an island with a house that has a snowy roof. I know this is Game Boy technology, but I really like how nicely they implemented the snowy look of the roof here. Going further right and past the whirlpools, we make it to the town of Blue Forest, a very snowy city with everything being rather white including every roof. It is based off of Aomori City right at the tip of mainland Japan with Aomori literally translating to Blue Forest. Much like new type, it seems Blue Forest may have been reused later in Generation 4 as the basis for Snowpoint City, with it being a snowy city and having similar arrangements of buildings. A good number of houses here and also another inaccessible cave here too. The gym school in this case being led by a female gym leader surrounded by tombstones. By process of elimination, this may be Jasmine here, who if this was actually to be her gym, she may have been designated as the ghost gym leader here back then. The other oddity is how many pitfalls are here in this town. Maybe it indicated holes of snow that were cleared out? Now going further up into a water route, we hit a dead end. Yeah this game is clearly unfinished after all, but by bypassing that, we make it to whirlpools and soon to north town. North Town is based off of the Hokkaido Island. Hokkaido is literally the location where the Sinnoh games are based off of, and much like Blue Forest, it seems Snowpoint City from the Generation 4 games share a similar shape to it, down to the cave at the very end and the water at the bottom of it. Speaking of the cave, while it is inaccessible like the others, it may be another candidate for that 7th floor minecart cave as Hokkaido is another major location for coal mining. Now going down and past Blue Forest, we get to a very simple straight route of just grass to the town of Stand. Stand is based off of the major city of Sendai, which stands as the midway point between Aomori and Tokyo. It is a lot like Fuchsia City as it has a whole zoo here too, and a gate here that while it accessible, may have been intended for a safari zone feature which they did want to restore in a later revision of the game, but was ultimately cut. But more on that in a later video. Stan City has a few other interesting locations too, including this odd house, featuring a nurse and a machine that looks like a time capsule. Odd as the Pokemon centers already have that feature. What could this have been possibly? The gym school featuring a rather basic gym design, possibly a placeholder with a bald NPC gym leader here. From the list, the only other gym leader that can possibly fill this one is one called Gamma. The last location of note here is yet again another crack house run by Team Rocket. This one being two floors and even has a neat vault at the end of it. Now for the literal big one. Passing through a grassy route, a gate and a bit more plain route, we make it to Kanto. Yes, Kanto from Generation 1. Just a tad smaller. So Kanto, as many of you know, is based off of the real Kanto region of Japan and is one of the most important ones as it contains Tokyo within it, which was Saffron and Cerulean City in the final game of Generation 1. And so this is effectively the largest city in this version of the game, having crunched some of the most prominent locations of Generation 1 Kanto into it too, including the Pokemon Tower but with no entrance, the Tokyo center areas of the Cerulean department store and the condominium being here with being rather similar to the generation 1 counterpart, though no Eevee at the top of the condominium this time. Silphco was here too and looked much more like the original games too based on the first floor, but still blocked from entering the upstairs. However, 
In the data, it seems the other floors were made, but for some reason the colors are really messed up when loaded. Clearly a very early build, the game corner and the prize collection building are here too. The game corner especially having all of its posters torn off in this version after Generation 1's fiasco. Likely the de facto go-to place for gambling in this game. Pallet Town is here as well, with Red's home featuring not just his mother, but another boy too. Maybe a new brother? Blue's house still has a sister as normal, but Oak Slab is being run by a woman. Maybe this is the cut green trainer from Generation 1? But there is also this odd location near the Pokemon Tower that has a very unique interior. Its entrance doesn't work, but I theorize that this could be the power plant due to its uniqueness and how it was close to the Pokemon Tower originally too in Generation 1. Thankfully, the power plant is still in the data. When loaded up, we have another eye-bleeding color palette here. I mean, this is at least fitting here with it looking super charged with electricity. Otherwise, it is a rather well-made power plant compared to its Generation 1 counterpart, as it is full of generators and computers, along with 4 floors too. Maybe this is where Raikou was set to appear in this version of the game. Now a real oddity is that there are two gyms in this city. Yes, two active gyms oddly enough. One in the bottom right, which features another bald guy running it, but the one in the top left is being run by none other than Red himself. As amazing as the idea of Red running a gym is rather than living in Mount Silver, it may be what led to the idea of Blue eventually running a gym himself in the final game. However, it is still odd why there are two gyms here. I mean Kanto is large and more region than a city, so Lee could have divided the region up to include two federal gyms. But this would also bring the gym total to 9. While the other problem here is that there are only 8 gym leaders registered in the data. Considering the other gym leader and the one in Stan City are represented by a bald guy, they may be the same person and that maybe the development team was undecided as to where to put that gym at that point. But once done with Kanto and all badges attained, it is time to hit the Pokemon League. So venturing left of Kanto as per the original game, and the final games too, we go through a simpler route to a dead end. Well, passing through the wall, we are back in Silent Hill and thus made our way around, which likely is supposed to be the intention here. Remember how I mentioned there is an opening at the top of the town that looked like it would lead to something, but it didn't? Well, it is possible that there was supposed to be a path that wasn't implemented yet, as there is a town just behind it called Prince. Prince is based on the city of Fuji, which is the town just at the base of Mount Fuji, and it is here where the Indigo Plateau, the Pokemon League is located. This is the most unfinished city of the game too, as you can't enter any of the doors, not even the Pokemon Center. The big building is obviously the Indigo Plateau itself. Unfortunately, the interior isn't made yet to see how it would have looked back then, but to the left is a waterfall that leads directly into Mount Fuji itself. Mount Fuji is actually what it's called in the game too, much like its real life counterpart, and was said to function as the Mount Silver of that era. Makes sense too as Mount Silver was also based off of Mount Fuji. However, it's pretty bare up here, with no one here and nothing to do. It looks like a good place for a Pokemon battle with how spacious the area is, though Red does already appear to be pretty preoccupied to have time to consider living in solitude here. But alas, it's clear that it's rather unfinished, much like the town below it. The entire map of the 1997 build of Pokemon Gold and Silver was a very fascinating set that made a rather well-designed region covering the whole of Japan with numerous fascinating areas of all different types from hot to cold climates, small towns to massive ones, and even a retooled Kanto. As amazing as this was, I am still happy that they did and instead focused on building a more thought out two regions for the final game featuring Johto and Kanto, thus freeing up regions like Kyushu and Hokkaido to even get their own games and be much more focused on their climates and all their beauty. But this wasn't all the beta maps of Pokemon Gold and Silver. While this was 1997 build on maps, there was also a 1999 build that resembled much more closer to the final game but still with some major differences. 
a build I plan to cover very soon. So hit the subscribe button for I plan to be back with more Pokemon and other games cut content soon. Hit the like button and comment below on if you prefer this version of Pokemon Generation 2's map or the final versions. So everyone, thank you for watching.